If you think I look rough this morning, you would be correct. I'm just kidding. Anywhere else I'd be. Do you know what I think about often? How most men just like don't do skincare and a lot of them, I would dare to say majority of them, have incredible skin. Like sometimes I just stare at Liam's skin and I'm like, this man has never put a product on his skin. No matter how much I beg him to like get just like a little, little skincare routine going, he's like, no. And yet he has this like radiant glowing skin. Someone explain. It's Tuesday today. I'm just obviously getting ready for the day. <gasps> There are blue skies today. Are you kidding? It has been raining for so long. Oh my gosh, but we might have good weather today. That's actually crazy. I'm not gonna lie, I am very sick of the rain. I do think it rained all night though. Also how cute are my pajamas? It's this like big sleep shirt. It's from Princess Polly and it has a little latte and a little newspaper like you're kidding. Another thing I've been thinking about a lot recently is just how beautiful Troy Bolton is. I've been getting a lot of like, what are they called? Like like fan edits or like little montage edits on TikTok. You know how like the Jacob Elordi one has been like popping off recently? Well, I've been getting a lot of like Troy Bolton edits recently and I don't think I'll ever get over my Troy Bolton crush. Troy Bolton in High School Musical 3 specifically, it's just, what do we want to wear today i showed me getting these shorts in my last weekly vlog they're from cotton on they're called the carpenter denim short they're definitely not jorts but they are just that little bit longer and i love them and i've literally been wearing them so much since i bought them and then i just got this new top from princess polly like you're actually kidding this is something a fairy would wear i'm gonna try it on and see how they look together i'm not sure if it'll be a vibe but Let's see. I'm really unsure about this combo. I love both the pieces individually, but I'm not sure if it's like giving. Mm, I think a different top, because I like these shorts. Maybe we'll just do a white tank. What do we think? Probably the most basic outfit I could possibly wear. I love it. As we were like getting ready for bed, Liam was like, oh, I might go to the gym tomorrow morning. And I was like, okay, like that's not that unusual. And then I heard him get up like early this morning and leave the house. And I was like, okay, he's going to the gym. Then I woke up a little while later, you know, started my day, had my coffee. He walks in with this. You're actually kidding. This man, I'm so obsessed with him. Today is our three year wedding anniversary, which is actually crazy. And so this was so sweet. And he wrote like literally the cutest card in the world. But yeah, that was literally like the best way to start my day ever. He always picks out the cutest flowers too. Like he really just, he gets it. Like this one has hydrangeas, roses, carnations, lilies, like literally all of my favorite flowers. I'm like, king. Typically we don't really do like gifts for anniversaries but i did get him a couple things so i'm gonna set them up in his office with like the card that i got him so that when he comes home from work he like sees it and i think i might set up like a cute little dinner or something tonight we're just eating dinner at home we're celebrating like properly this weekend we're going to the coast we're going to the sunny coast which is where we had our honeymoon we stay at the same place every year which is so special because we had our honeymoon there and it's also really special because it's where liam's parents had their honeymoon like the exact same apartment where they spent their honeymoon is where we spent our honeymoon and now where we celebrate our anniversary every year and that just literally warms my heart so much. I think it's so special. And this year we were like, we should do some like activity or something together, you know? And so we're gonna do a little like barista course and I'm so excited. I think it'll be so fun. We both absolutely love coffee, but we're definitely not experts. And I wouldn't say we're coffee snobs either, but we thought it would just be like a fun thing to do together. And we're doing it at our favorite coffee shop in Cleandra, which is called Slide. So I think it'll just be so fun. I'm so excited about it. Anyway, let's make some breakfast. I'm still definitely on my yoga bowl obsession, especially for summer when you wake up and it's already hot. Like the last thing I wanna do is eat like a hot meal for breakfast. And it's so easy. It literally takes like two minutes. How good. I just had a knock on the door and this is a book that I ordered a couple weeks ago, but it came from the US, so it took a while. I'm so excited. 
It's so beautiful. I decided to order the US edition of Divine Rivals. This was one of my favorite books of 2023. And I do love the UK edition as well, but I specifically love what is under the dust jacket of the US edition. Wow, it's so beautiful. And I want to display this. It's a little typewriter, like gold foiled typewriter. And it says, Dear Iris. It's absolutely so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love it. My plan for this morning is to edit my book journal video. I'm just going to see how much editing I can do before I have my therapy session, which is at 11. Fingers crossed we can get a lot done. I didn't finish all my editing, but we definitely got a big chunk done, but I have to leave. You know how this morning I was like, oh my gosh, blue skies. Now it's raining, so that's really, really fun. And it's like raining hard as well. That makes me so sad. I just finished my therapy appointment. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I've decided that I want to do some book shopping because I actually haven't done any book shopping this year, which is kind of crazy. It's literally January 16th. Calm down, Rachel. But obviously I am a big book shopping, book loving girly. And December I was on a book buying ban. Okay, I have actually, <laughs> I have actually bought like four books this year. However, they were all books that I had already read so I bought the rest of the Lunar Chronicles because I read them from the library loved them one of my own copies so that was the three books and then I bought the Divine Rivals copy that I showed you earlier today so <laughs> I have bought a couple books but I haven't added anything to my physical TBR which has been great like I'm honestly proud of that but there are a couple of new releases that have come out that I want to get my hands on and I was waiting till I'd read a few more of the physical books on my physical TBR on my cart so that I would like have space to add them in because my mentality is like if I don't have any space on my TBR cart I'm not allowed to add any more books so I have a bit of space there are two books that I specifically have my eye on and because the new releases my library like won't have them or if they do have them they're going to be on hold for like ages so I think I'm going to treat myself to the physical copies I know Destiny was saying that she only wants to buy like five books a month and that honestly sounds like such a good like I don't want to say that I'm definitely going to do that but I feel like mentally that sounds like a good plan especially in terms of like adding to my physical TBR because I have no problem buying books that I've already read that I like want my own physical copy of like to me that's fine it almost doesn't even count <laughs> it's just like adding to my physical TBR that is what I don't want to do too much of this year because I just get overwhelmed and we're trying to work on decreasing the physical TBR not adding to it so so I think I'm gonna do that I also want to grab some lunch and I don't know where I want to go I was gonna get an acai bowl but I feel like now that it's raining I'm not feeling acai I could go to schnitz couldn't I I'm trying to get better at doing things by myself and like taking myself on little solo dates like intentionally because I feel like grocery shopping and like going book shopping and stuff like they're things that I do by myself all the time but like going to a cafe or like going to a restaurant or like going out to get food and like sitting in a cafe by myself or like sitting in a restaurant by myself like that sounds terrifying but I want to try and get better at it. very mini book haul. Like I said, I went in with two books in mind and I only ended up getting those two books. I had a look at a bunch of other things, but nothing really stood out to me. But this is the first book I picked up. I think this is one of my favorite covers ever. The first book as well. This is the sequel to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And that is also just a gorgeous book. This one is called Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. And honestly, I have no idea what this is about. Like, obviously I know that it follows the two main characters from the first book, but I haven't looked into this one at all and I kind of want to go in blind. This series is like cozy fantasy. Like not a lot happens, but it is so good. I loved the first book. I gave it five stars. It was one of my favorite books of last year. So I'm very excited to have the sequel in my hands. And the other one that I picked up is of course, Ruthless Vows. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't read this yet. This is the sequel to Divine Rivals. And again, 
that was one of my favorite books from last year. I absolutely adored it. And you can tell I've been in a slump because I haven't picked this up yet. It came out early January in Australia. I know it came out earlier in the US, but the fact that I haven't even like bothered to go out and get this just really shows how much of a slump I'm in because I just, I just haven't felt like reading anything really, um, which is super fun and fresh and funky, but finally got my hands on this. I am really excited to read it, but I don't want to read it while I'm slumping because I like, I want to enjoy it as much as possible. So I'm just going to wait until I'm in the mood to read it. I have had a bunch of messages from people asking me my thoughts on this and like, if I've read it, obviously I haven't read it yet, but like I said, I just, I want to give it the best chance possible. So I'm just going to wait until I'm really like in the mood to pick it up, but that's my <laughs> mini book haul and now I'm going to go continue working on the video that I was editing earlier. I am feeling so tired. I feel like I'm just so like mentally drained after therapy. Not every time but like sometimes and today I'm just very mentally drained so I just like don't want to speak to anyone, don't want to do anything, <laughs> just like no one come near me please. So I'm just gonna go edit. We have a package. It's from Stax. I think this is a new collection and I'm so excited about this one. So let's open it together, shall we? <gasps> this will have launched by the time you're seeing this video. Hopefully it hasn't sold out straight away because it's really cute and I feel like it's gonna sell very quickly. Ah, I feel like this is one of my favorite collections I've done in a while. We have this gorgeous hat. It says Racket Club Luxury Athletica. So this is a Racket Club collection, so it's all like tennessy kind of themed. I don't play tennis, but I'm just gonna wear it like when I just work out in general. We have some fresh socks. Love stack socks. Ooh, is this a towel? That's nice. We have a towel. We have this little tank. It's like this creamy, buttery yellow color. I love the little like crossover detail. So cute. We have a little scoop neck sports bra. I love that. You're kidding. This is so cute. I feel like I'm going to wear this to work out, but also just like on a normal day. Like even this shirt with my little denim skirt would be so cute. This is probably the thing I'm most excited about. This is a little like active wear dress. And I thought this would be perfect because Liam's been really getting into golf and I want to go with him and just like hang out, probably just sit on the golf cart and read my book if I'm being completely honest. But they have a dress code at all the golf clubs and you have to wear collared shirts. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I could just wear this as a little golf girly. I mean, obviously it's designed as a little tennis outfit, but like imagine me on the golf course in my little dress. You're kidding. Oh, this is gorgeous. I honestly might have to order a couple pieces for myself because I'm obsessed with these and I kind of want a few more. I just finished having a lunch, so I think I'm going to make myself a little midday coffee because I'm feeling pretty tired. And then I might just sit and crochet for a bit <laughs> as a little like lunch break activity. And I need to show you my crochet project that I'm working on right now because it's the biggest one I've done so far. It's still very simple, keep that in mind, but my biggest thing yet. Crazy. I feel like right after you pour the espresso shot into your latte before you mix it in properly is like one of my top five favorite things because it's just literally so beautiful. Like why does it feel like art? <laughs> I know I'm dramatic, but it's just the little things in life, you know? Let me show you my crochet projects that I'm working on. It doesn't look very good yet. Hopefully it'll look better when it's finished, but this is it. Does anyone know what it is? <laughs> right now it's just like a little pouch looking thing but I am probably almost halfway through making my very first book sleeve. I'm so excited. I literally just went on YouTube, typed in how to crochet a book sleeve and clicked on like the first video. So I'm just kind of using this one as a bit of a practice round and it's definitely not perfect. Like my stitches are not the most beautiful thing in the world, but I'm learning and it's honestly so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. It's probably honestly one of the most simple things I've made but it's just the biggest so it's taking the longest and I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is just like make it plain and then I'm gonna either attach some hearts or some flowers which I've already learned how to make. I've made a few and I haven't like used them for anything I was just using them to like learn so I'm thinking I might make some white little flowers to attach or some little white hearts because I also learned how to make hearts. I think flowers are probably my favorite. We'll see, I've still got quite a while to get to that point because <laughs> I've been crocheting for a while and I'm still still going on the actual like sleeve part. So I think I'm just gonna sit here for a little while, work on my book sleeve, 
drink my coffee, maybe watch some YouTube. I actually started re-watching one of the old book girlies vlogs. This is Destiny's one that went up during Bookmas and it's just making me so happy. And I'm sorry that I've left you guys home. I was also watching football. Man. I feel like I'm still so slow. Everything that I've learned so far has just been from YouTube videos. Like anytime I wanna make something, I'll be like, how to crochet a granny square, how to crochet for beginners, how to crochet a heart, how to crochet a flower, whatever. And I'm watching these people make these videos, teaching me how to do these things, and they're so quick. And obviously they're even like slowing it down so that you can follow along and like learn from them because they're teaching it. And everything I'm doing is like, for beginners so they're like going really slow but they're still just so fast and I'm like will I ever be able to do this any quicker than what I am because I feel like I'm just working in slow motion but also it's just so peaceful to do this I posted a little Instagram dump the other day just of like random photos that I had on my camera camera <laughs> camera roll that I've taken in the past like week or whatever and the caption was like slowly morphing into a grandma but not mad about it because tell me why my favorite things to do are read books crochet drink cups of tea and biscuits bake desserts um what else do I like doing puzzles like go for walks I don't know like it, it just feels very grandma core of me but I'm not even mad about it like I'm 25 going on 70 and I'm not mad about it because I'm just having so much fun I saw this quote on Pinterest a while ago and it really like really stuck with me oh I don't even know what the exact wording of it was but it was something along the lines of don't do what everyone else thinks is fun like do what you think is fun and it's really just stuck with me because I feel like there are a lot of things Things that are just like stereotypical things that young people enjoy doing and I feel like guilty if I don't enjoy doing those things or if I don't make those things a priority in my life like I'm like oh I'm like wasting my 20s or whatever and then I was like no like I'm not wasting my 20s I'm just doing things that I find joy in and I think as well being an introvert sometimes I'm like oh like I should be you know going out and doing things and hanging out with people all the time and like I don't know just <laughs> having more fun quote unquote fun and don't get me wrong I obviously love spending time with my friends but I just feel like my capacity for socializing is just not super big and I just really like my favorite thing to do is really just sit at home and crochet or do a little craft and like scrapbooking or creating my reading journal or read a book or whatever like that is really where I am at the most peace that is where I feel like I just am the most content I'm the least anxious and I honestly just find so much joy in those things and I don't think you need to feel guilty if you just find joy in things that are maybe seen as boring or different or whatever it may be I don't know and I'm just really letting myself embrace that a little bit more and just really trying to find like what do I really enjoy doing and I'm finding things <laughs> like crocheting like obviously I've only been crocheting for a couple weeks and tell me why this is literally so much fun to me like every single day I'm just like oh my gosh I can't wait to finish all my work so that I can like crochet <laughs> I've also been trying to implement like an hour at the end of the day where I can just do like whatever I want and not like feel guilty about it because sometimes I'm just like I need to be productive all the time and if I'm not like getting something done that's like for work or whatever I feel guilty and so sometimes like now when I'm just like sitting and crocheting and it's not really like productive and I'm not like doing anything that's necessarily like useful I guess I feel guilty for it and I'm just like that is just so silly like you should be able to do things that just bring you joy and that can be the only reason why you do it like it doesn't need to have a better reason, you know? So we're really embracing hobbies in 2024. It's one of my goals and so far so good. I wonder how long it'll take me to make this. I'm so excited to really learn how to like make some fun things and like expand my, my knowledge and my skills. I also have really been learning how important it is to do things that you're not very good at. Like learning to crochet at the start, it was like kind of frustrating because I was like, this is so hard. And I like, I just want to be good at it already. And 
And then I was like, no, Rachel, just like undo it and try again and undo it and try again and rewatch the video and try again. And now I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of things. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm still very much a beginner, but like you have to be bad at something before you can be good at it. And just because you're bad at it doesn't mean it's not fun. Like you can find joy in the process rather than just like being good at something. I feel like if I'm not automatically good at something, sometimes I just like want to give up. But like you don't have to be good at everything as well. Like I don't have to be the best crocheter in the world for it to be a fun thing or for me to say that I love crocheting. Like I can just say I love crocheting because I think it's a fun thing to do, not because I'm necessarily good at it. Anyway, that's my TED talk for the day. I don't know why I felt the need to just word vomit on all of you, but hopefully something that I said may have resonated with someone. I feel like I'm really giving grandma right now. Like it looks like I have like a blanket on my <laughs> lap and I'm just like knitting a sweater for my grandson. Back in my day, I used to do the same things I'm doing right now. Oh, I messed up a stitch. Okay, I'm gonna go and not get distracted. I've gathered you all here today in the library because I wanna do some rearranging. Yep, 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 yep. I know I literally just filmed my bookshelf tour at the end of last year, but I rearrange my bookshelves like every week, so this is not that crazy. I wanna have a few different books on display. I also think I'm going to retire the rainbow shelves. I only have two, like this shelf and this shelf are my only rainbow shelves, but I think I want to change that. I'm just not as into it as I used to be. I still think it looks really nice, but I would like to have some authors together instead, I think. Kind of like how I have Jessa Hastings and Emily Henry together, I kind of want to do that with some of my other favorite authors. I also want to move some of the ones that are along the top, which you can barely see. You guys can see them up there. Um, I just want to move some stuff, so that's what we're going to do. Also, the next Magnolia Parks comes out kind of soon, and I've realized that I think I want to have like a whole Jessa Hastings shelf because I think if I display some of the books front facing, I have enough to be able to do that, especially because the new Magnolia Parks is going to have two different covers and of course I'm going to get my hands on both of them because I have to, like it's literally illegal for me not to. Then I'll have two more books to add, so I just, I, I thought it would be fun to have a whole dedicated shelf, kind of like how I have a Sarah J Mass shelf and a Cassandra Clare shelf. Do I need another bookshelf? Probably. We're just gonna see how we go. I also haven't updated you, but we have two other Billy bookshelves on the other side of this room. Welcome. These are the ugly shelves, as I like to refer to them, which basically just means they aren't really organized that cute. So basically any books that I take off that shelf, like my, my normal shelves that I like don't have space for are gonna go on these shelves. This one is like all Liam's stuff, and then this is just like all my own stuff that doesn't fit on the <laughs> other shelves so we do actually have some space it's just not on the on my like pretty shelves i'm just gonna stop talking and start moving books around so enjoy a bit of a time lapse situation <laughs> it makes sense logically. Like it makes sense to have authors together, but my brain just looks at it and is like ugly. Colors ugly do not go together. I think I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna leave it for a while, let my thoughts just like marinate for a few days. And what do you do with all of the authors where you only have like one of their books? That's the other issue that I'm having. So I have quite a few of those. <laughs> This is feeling a little bit better. It's not perfect by any means. Here's the other thing about bookshelves is that they are constantly changing. And so it's kind of hard because you're like, I want to make it look perfect and be like really happy with it. But the next time I read a book, I'm going to have to find a place for it. So you have to almost like organize it in a way where you can keep adding to it. And that's what I struggle with, especially with like series that I know I want to keep together or authors that I know I'm going to want to keep together. I don't know, but I, I'm having fun, even though I'm a little stressed. I'm gonna move, hmm. I have a bunch of thrillers up the top of this side. So I definitely wanna move them over and have all my thrillers on this brown shelf over here. Cause that just makes sense to me. And then I can reorganize the fantasy a little bit. Cause right now I have, I don't know, fantasy, romance, 
the top a mess. But yeah, I think what I want to do is have fantasy, romance, thrillers, general fiction, literary fiction on the brown shelf. So, let's do that. I feel like there could be a much better system going on with my fantasy books. Right now, there's kind of a system. It's like down the bottom shelf, colorful paperbacks. Then the shelf above, kind of like black and darker spines. Then we have Sarah J Mass, Cassandra Clare. Those two are very organized, happy with those ones. Then we have tall paperbacks and then just whatever's left. And I feel like we can just do better than that. So I'm thinking up the top, I might try and do sci-fi and dystopian. So I'm gonna try and do some rearranging. turning out. I'm kind of surprised. So what I've kind of done with the fantasy side is I've put a lot of my dystopian and sci-fi at the top. Not all of it, but like probably the majority of it. So that's what's on the very, very top. Then we just have my tall paperbacks because I like keeping the tall ones together because they just look neat. Then we have like a favorites shelf. So we have Divine Rivals also. I haven't read Ruthless Vows or the second Emily Wilde book. I've just put them here so that I know that there's space for them when I do read them. But yeah, I have Divine Rivals, Emily Wilde. Then I have my beautiful hardcover copies of the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. Then nothing's changed here. We just have my Cassandra Clare books. Nothing's changed here, Sarah J Mass shelf. And then we just kind of have darker fantasy books, like darker spines like color not as in like dark themes <laughs> and then below that we just have like brighter colorful lighter spines for fantasy books so i still need to do the top of the romance shelf which will just be like leftover romance books and then i still need to find a home for my ya mystery books they used to be on the bottom shelf here but the romance has taken over Okay, I think these shelves are done. Now I just need to find homes for all of these. So they are just gonna have to find space somewhere here. Okay, I think this is like as organized as it's gonna get. Honestly, up here we have classics and then I have a couple Harry Potter books. Then this shelf is like, publisher mail that I want to get to but I haven't yet. <laughs> sometimes I move these onto my TBR cart, sometimes I don't but this is kind of like their limbo. <laughs> then we have general fiction, literary fiction, there is also some historical fiction in there, just kind of like anything else. Then we have my YA mysteries and thrillers, then we have adult thrillers and then down the bottom we just have any leftover romance. So here are the updated shelves. I like some parts. There are some parts that I'm not 100% happy with, but overall I do like the new kind of organizational system that I have. I like that this whole side is now fantasy and this whole side is now romance and then all of the like other fiction, historical, literary, general, thrillers, mysteries are all over that side. I mean, apart from the extra romance that's down the bottom that doesn't fit, but like I've done everything I can. I could technically fit more in here because I do have the front facing books, but I love how they look and all of the like front facing ones are like my favorites. So I love having them on display. I think it's so special, but there's a little bookshelf organization for you. Will we be back here in a week filming the same thing? Maybe, maybe not, you never know. I am gonna end off the vlog here because Liam's on his way home from work and we are going to head straight to the Sunshine Coast for our little anniversary weekend. But I hope you guys enjoyed spending the past couple days with me. I love you all so, so much and I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.